hello. Welcome to Algebra 2 AVE. We are dealing with second semester. We are in chapter six here. Um, this semester we are broken down into six chapters, but some of them are pretty short. Uh, it's pretty similar to first semester. I like second semester of Algebra 2. Lots of different things you haven't seen before. Uh, some things you might have seen a little bit, but a lot of new stuff. So kind of different and I think pretty interesting stuff as well. We'll do a lot of probability and graphs and just a, a whole bunch of stuff. It's a good chapter or a good semester. So hopefully you'll feel the same way. Today we are working on inverses. So there's lots of different resources in each section. Um, I've got videos, I've got notes, I've got answer keys, and then I've got Khan Academy and then quizzes as well. So you could practice that. Uh, you can kind of explore a little bit. I'll have another video about that. But let's get into some notes here today. A little bit longer section, 6.1. Um, we'll, could have been a two video lesson. I'm gonna to try to do it in one. We'll see how that goes. But definitely something that's gonna come up a lot in uh, math from here on out, dealing with inverses and understanding what's happening with that. So without any further ado, let's get to it. Oh, I'm so big. Let's go smaller. All right, my bad. Let's get to it. I'm sorry I scared you so early. That's a bad sign. All right, here we go. Yeah. Yeah, go away. All right, here we go. 6.1. Remember, and this is something you've learned before that a relation is just a set of ordered pairs, all right? So if you talk about a relation, if something is a relation, it's just a set of ordered pairs. So negative three, two is a relation just because it's two things that are related to each other. An inverse relation is the set of ordered pairs we get by simply reversing the coordinates of the original ordered pair, okay? So to find an inverse pair, all you gotta do is switch the X and the Y. So negative three, two becomes two, negative three. All you do is switch the two numbers. You don't change any signs, anything like that. You just flip them. Seven one becomes one seven. That's it, all right? Inverse functions can be written like that, f to the little negative one of x. Um, that's definitely something you can see as well. And then we'll see here in a second how it's reflected over the line y equals x. So let's start off. I'm gonna just make up some ordered pairs. So these are just random things. Let's go two, three, two, three, let's go. Oh, like negative three, five. Uh, let's go one, seven. Oh, I'm sorry, I can't do numbers. I'm making up numbers as I go. Negative seven, one, boom. That's good, let's go with those three. All right, I'm just gonna graph those three ordered pairs. I'm gonna connect the lines just so we can see it. All right, so we get that picture right there. That is our original graph. All right, so let's find out what happens when you make the inverse ordered pair. So two, three, if I'm finding the inverse of it, we just learned to find the inverse, you just flip the two numbers. So that's gonna be three, two. Negative three, five is gonna become five, negative three. So five, negative three. And negative seven, one is gonna become one, negative seven. Boom, right there, let's connect those dots just like that. And those two graphs are inverses. And it might look a little strange, but you can tell that they're definitely related to each other. If I took this line and folded it down, would it match up? Does it have x-axis symmetry? No, it doesn't have x-axis symmetry. And if I fold it over the y-axis, it wouldn't match up either. The type of symmetry this graph has, uh, inverse functions have the line y equals x. So a line that goes right through the origin that has a slope of one, y equals x. Imagine if you took that graph and folded over that line, that's how you could tell two graphs are inverses. Okay, so y equals x is gonna be that inverse line. And it should make sense because literally what we're doing is making the y the x. y is equal to x, that's where that's coming from. All right, so that's what it looks like. Let's try another one. So I'm just gonna do this real quick. In fact, I'm gonna pause it here so I can do it fast. All right, so all I did here is I took ordered pairs like this and flipped them, flipped them, flipped them, and so on. You can kind of see what happened. Uh, I went ahead and graphed those and then connected the dots, and I got that cool little red line there. Again, if two graphs are inverses of each other, the y and x are going to be switched. And if I folded over that line, y equals x right there, it uh, looks like my picture's not perfect, but you can see how they are, are pretty much over that line. That's what inverse functions look like. Um, we could keep doing that. Let's try one more. Uh, so let's graph the equation in its inverse. So x plus three squared plus one. We graphed that back uh, first semester. X plus three squared plus one. It looks like that. We've got this ordered pair. It's at negative three, one. 
So the inverse of that is going to be 1, negative 3. Boom, right there. And then I'm going to use my brain here and kind of go from there. But I could take this ordered pair. That's uh, negative 2, 2. So I'm going to go to 2, negative 2. And that one's at 1, 5. So I'm going to go to 5, negative 1. Boom, right there. And boom, right there. Connect the dots. Connect the dots. And again, if I had that line right down the middle, you can see how they reflect over that line and match up. Okay, that's going to be the same thing every time. It's not real difficult to do. Again, the square root graph, the plus 5 takes me left 5. The minus 2 takes me down 2. If you don't believe me, that is what the graph looks like. Uh, and then we would just graph it. So it would start right here, 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 and there. If you don't believe me, you can take a little bit more time and do it. But it's pretty straightforward. You can see those same graphs happening over and over again. They are symmetrical over the axis. And again, all I'm doing is I'm taking an ordered pair. I'm taking each one here, like negative 5, negative 2, and then flipping them. Negative 2, negative 5. That's where I'm getting those from. That's what an inverse graph looks like. Beyond that? It's pretty straightforward. All right, let's do a couple more here. Let's graph the line and its inverse. Negative 2 thirds x plus 2. Okay, so remember how to graph negative 2 thirds x plus 2. The plus 2 is my y intercept. The negative 2 thirds is my slope. So I'm going down 2 over 3, down 2 over 3 up two over three and so on all right it would look just like that and there are two ways we could do this and i'm gonna kind of jump into the notes here in the second part but we could graph the inverse so i've got this ordered pair right here at zero two so i know i'm going to go through two zero and this one's at three zero so i know i'm going to go through zero three and i could keep going from there let me show you how to actually find the inverse equation to find the inverse of a function, there are two steps. Step one is just like we did with ordered pairs, you're going to flip the x and the y. So if you look here, I literally took the y and the x and I flipped their spots. That's it. Don't get any more creative than that. I flipped the two spots. And then once I've done that, I'm going to get y by itself. So if I got y by itself, I would subtract 2. And then I've got this negative two-thirds y. To get rid of this three on bottom, I'm going to multiply both sides by three. So I'm going to get three x minus six is equal to negative two y. And then to get rid of the negative two, I would divide everything by negative two. So that's going to get me negative three halves x. Negative six divided by negative two would be positive three is equal to y. Well, look at this graph that we've made so far. We could have taken the ordered pairs and flipped them. But if we did it this way, oh, my y-intercept is 3. Oh, oh, yeah, I've got a dot there. Oh, my slope is negative 3 halves. I'm down 3 over 2, down 3, uh, 1, 2, 3, over 2, down 3, over 2. Oh, yeah, the same thing that we thought it would look like, that guy right there. We could have flipped the ordered pairs instead. We found the inverse by doing two steps, flipping the x and y, and then solving for y. Again, if I flipped it over that line right down the middle here, you can see how those two lines would match up. And that's it, okay? That's all it is to finding an inverse. Flipping ordered pairs, or like we did with an equation, is doing two steps. So again, our two steps to finding an inverse. Step one, flip x and y. That is the first step to finding an inverse. Once you have flipped your x and your y, then you are going to solve for y. And if you had me first semester, you know what I've said all the time. If I'm trying to get a letter by itself, the best way to do that is think about PEMDAS in reverse. And, and hopefully that'll make sense here in a second. But that is how you solve for y. So flip x and y, solve for y. Let's do it. Number one, y equals 9 minus 2x. So step one, flip the x and the y. Boom, right there. Flip the x and the y. Step two, get y by itself. And again, if you're not great at this, PEMDAS in reverse. We're starting off with adding or subtracting. So, oh, here's a 9. I'm going to get rid of that 9 by subtracting that 9. And then to get rid of the negative 2, all right, I did that. Now I'm to multiplying and dividing. Oh, that's being multiplied by negative 2. 
So I'm going to divide by negative 2. Boom. There is my answer. You could leave it as x minus 9 divided by negative 2, or you could make it negative 1 half x plus 9 halves. I just divided both things by negative 2. That is my inverse function. Okay, if you don't believe me, graph this thing and graph that thing, and you'll see that same relationship that we've been dealing with. Let's do it again. Flip the x and the y. Get y by itself. So I'm going to add or subtract first. So I'm going to subtract the 7. Get rid of the 3. It's being multiplied or divided. So I'm going to divide by 3. Divide by 3. Boom. Answer. You could leave it like that, or you could write it as 1 third x minus 7 thirds. Both of them are the same thing. Don't have to rewrite it like that if you don't want to. Pretty straightforward. Let's try it again. Let's look at number 3. So we're trying to find the inverse. Two steps to find an inverse. Step 1. Flip the x and the y. Step two, solve for y. So in this case, I really can't mess with that plus six because it's being divided by five. And so the first thing I'm going to do to get rid of that five is I'm going to multiply both sides by five. That's going to cancel. I get 5x is equal to y plus six. So to solve that thing, I'm going to subtract six. Same thing here on number four. I set this up for in class because in class you would, I would do when you would do and I would do when you would do one. Ah, I didn't do my first step first. So if it feels like sometimes notes are a little repetitive because you're like, oh, he just did one like that. It's because they are. It's because they're set up for you to practice them. And even if I taught this in class, uh, some students would move a little bit quicker than me and that's fine. So I multiplied by three first. All right, flipped X and Y. Then I multiplied by three. Now I'm going to add the three. And to finish, divide by 2. Boom, there's my answer. 3x plus 3 all divided by 2. You could get, you could simplify that and write it as like 3 halves x plus 3 halves, just dividing both numbers by 2, but you don't need to. Both work. All right, let's get to a couple that we haven't quite done yet. y is equal to the square root of x minus 4. First thing I'm going to do is flip the x and the y. Again, we're thinking PEMDAS in reverse. We try to add or subtract, but I can't touch that adding or subtracting yet because it's underneath the square root. There is no multiply or divide. The first thing we're gonna do is an exponent. It is square rooted. What is the opposite of square rooting something? Hopefully you learned that back in the last chapter you did. The opposite of square rooting is squaring. So I'm gonna get x squared, and over here, those two square and square roots are gonna cancel. And to finish, I'm going to add 4. Same thing on this one, x squared plus 2. If I want to solve, flip x and y. Minus 2. And then to get rid of a square, how do you get rid of a square? Oh, you square root it. You square root it. Those two things are going to cancel. The square root of x minus 2 is equal to y. And a little side note here, we are doing the basic version of this. This and this are inverses of each other if we restrict the domain, okay? And that might be a little bit more advanced than we want to get to right now, but if you know what this graph looks like, let me draw you a picture here, and we, we can use Desmos here in a second. The minus 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, it takes it to the right and it makes it go like that. That is what that graph would look like. x squared plus 4 would be a graph that looks like this, and technically it would be a parabola. When we are dealing with inverse functions, they need to be so that they need to be a function no matter which way we set this thing up. And so because this graph right here does not have a bottom part, technically the inverse of this thing is going to be this, but only when x is greater than or equal to zero, because we don't want to have this other half of this graph. It would look just like that to ma match it up. All right, so be aware of it. It's not something that we are getting really deep into in this section, but just see it. All right, let me show you that on Desmos real quick. So let me show you that last one, y equals x squared plus 2. That was my original graph. If I were to get our final answer, we got y is equal to the square root of x minus 2. So you can see how those graphs don't match up. In order for us, to make true inverses, we would want to say that this original graph is only when x is greater than or equal to zero. 
And now you can see again, if I put that line y equals x there, how we can fold over that thing and match it up. All right, so be aware that they do need to be uh, functions both when you flip them left or right, or flip them, uh, flip the x's and y's or not. Uh, that's the same thing, okay? Hope that helped. Again, not too crazy to find an inverse, flip the x and the y, and that's about it. Hope it helps. If not, ask me some questions.